What is going on guys, DBG here, and today we are going to be talking about NBA 2K22, my team. And straight up, this is going to be a video. Do not, and I repeat, do not, obviously, for everything, just, dude, just do what you want. I'm here to give advice, not, and I'm not pointing a gun to your head and saying you have to do what I want to do. Before everyone gets angry in the comments being like, oh, um... I'm doing my own thing. It's like, do not click on a tip video and get angry when the tips are not exactly what you want. Okay. Now let's calm it down. I don't know why I'm down to 50 VC, but um, I don't know where I spent VC. Either way, guys, if you want to make the most of your MT, do not buy any players. Like, this is not the time of the year to do that. I'm telling you right now. Unless you're buying Matumbo. There are, I'm going to say this right now. There are no players other than the Kembe Matumbo that are realistically going to make you win a game of 2K that costs a bit of money. So if you've just started off the game, let me just say starter. If you just started off the game, you're playing a little bit and you're working your way up. This squad right here, let's just say 50 TT offline games. If you've got 50 TT offline games, You've got this dude right here. You have got Anthony Simons. Anthony freaking Simons, the best screen setter in the entire game. Let's just say you played the two hours needed to get Daryl Griffith. I'm just going to pick a bunch of cheap guys. The 5,000 MT god that is him. This guy, Darius Miles might be a little bit expensive right now. You've got him. And screw it. You just want a big center? Get Rudy Gobert. Point guards. Um, off the bench. This guy's not... I would say this guy, but he's not available anymore. I mean, Collison's kind of a bit small. Think, who's really easy to get? Oh, sorry, this guy. Emmanuel Quickly. You've got Emmanuel Quickly. And then, look, you go for the cheap guys, then. You go for Gary Harris. You go Josh Giddy. People don't realize how good this Josh Giddy card is. You get Josh Giddy in there. Or Duncan Robinson. Say Duncan Robinson. Power forwards. Like some of these guys are good. Boyan's pretty cheap. Centers. The centers are kind of a little bit expensive. Screw up. Pay a 4k MT. You want a big body. I'll get your 2000 MT Duncan or Wendell Carter Jr. I don't know. Took in three random golds here at the end of the bench. I mean, this squad's more than can be more than competitive. He can be more than competitive. And the reason you shouldn't buy players is that cards are about to have the biggest market crash in all of 2K is about to come. It is it is on the way. Because if you guys don't know, 2K have this is nothing has flopped worse with 2K than these packs right here. These Tuesday packs. I don't think I've ever seen anything flop as badly. Because what 2K have done is, if you guys look at this, they have the exact same odds as they did day one. So it's like, it's week three now. If you look at Dunktober packs, um, they have a 2% chance at a diamond. These ones are less than 2%. And if you guys don't know, less than 2%, we've calculated with these packs, they're like 0.0, or they're like 0.5%. So this is like 2% at a diamond, this is like 0.5%. And then, like, with these packs, there's, you're, you're so unlikely to get anything that you may as well just buy a bunch of these guys. Buy a bunch of League Deluxe packs. Like, if you're trying to make, if you're just trying to make MT, just buy a bunch of League Deluxe packs. These packs are worse, are worse off. Both of these packs are bad. But, like, these packs are so far behind. Not only are the cards in them not good. Oh, my God, I almost clicked buy a pack. Not only are the cards in these packs not good, they are... The odds are so bad that nobody's opening these packs. So if you guys are looking at the packs now, like you're looking at Jimmy Butler. So Jimmy Butler is a player that's they say is a 7% chance. This pack, this card was out yesterday. There are like 15 of him within there. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 12. There are 12 in the hour. And this these packs came out yesterday. They came out yesterday. And we're even seeing it with like Donovan Mitchell. We're seeing it with like Donovan Mitchell. So... Like he's up here at like 29k. Like these guys, not only like these guys are in and around. 
are going to be high. These are always going to be high. And I remember when Ty was saying, he said one of his videos that he thinks Mitchell's going to go to 50k. I don't think Mitchell will go to 50 because there are an abundance of Donovan Mitchells. But we've seen it here with Darius Miles. Like these guys get rarer and rarer and rarer. They just, these guys get super rare. Like his Ruby card, all of a sudden, the flash glitch card is now like 13, 14k, whereas he started off at 5k because he was rare. Basically, what the cards that are going to go up in price, if you see anything like this, anything like a deluxe pack, none of these cards are going up in price. Over time, none of these cards in deluxe packs because so many of these cards are pulled, especially these low guys. Like, as great as Gary Harris is, there are so many of them. As great as Donovan Mitchell and Josh Smith are, there are so many. They're going to stay around the same price for a while. Especially when super packs come out. But these guys, they're go they go up in price. So if we look at the primetime set, if you just bought every primetime card and held, you would have made so much MT. So you see CP3. He was 50k at one stage. He's over 100. Iverson, I, I think he's quite a bit expensive. Um, DeRozan. DeRozan just sucks. Steve Nash, again, he was way under the 100k. He's now way over the 100k because he's so rare. Jimmy Butler, I don't think he's necessarily going to go up. If you got Stefan Marbury at his cheapest, which was like 20k. Like, dude, I could probably buy a step, buy this Stefan Marbury. Wait, that one every 30k right now? Oh dear lord. Like I thought I gotten it I was getting a steal selling my DR and Fox for I sold my DR and Fox for 27k last week. And I thought, not a chance. DR and Fox is only okay. No way is DR and Fox gonna go to 35k. Like, he's already up 8k on last week. Gerald Wallace? Is Gerald Wallace over 16k? Okay, thank god. I was like, Gerald Wallace surely is not going up in price. 15k, yeah. This card's ass. It's like all the cards that people want as they get rarer. I get it. It's all supply and demand. But like, I don't even know. I don't even know to say if this is a good time to sell because I don't know if cards price are going to go up. I just know all like damn well it's not a good, it's a good time. It's not a good time to buy. Like what you should do is every Friday, buy all the cheap cards that come out on that Friday and then work your way up. So last Friday, and by that, I mean, say, last Friday, you bought Giddy. You bought Cam Reddish. You got Ludort. You then got, I don't know, how many other cheap... All the guys are like 2, 3 KMT, like Taylor Horton Tucker. Those guys. Because you can't make losses on those guys. If you buy these 850 Sapphires that end up being good, you're not going to make a loss on them. Trust me, you're not going to make a loss. If you buy these Ruby cards at like 2,000 MT, there's going to be some reason where you'll make your money back. Do not spend, like, if you spend more than 30k on a card, you're, one, you're overspending, and two, you might actually flip. You, it might actually be a good investment, but there's an equal chance that something happens to make that go down like that. If 2k bring out super packs with a 10% chance at an Amethyst, Josh Smith drops 10k. Donovan Mitchell drops 10k. All these Amethyst guys drop 10k. If 2k do that. So... It's just crazy the way the market is. Like, you can sell... Like, it's a seller... It's not only is it a seller's market. Prices still might go up. It's so hard to predict because... A lot of the time when it comes to my team, when it comes to the market, there are trends. But it's hard to judge trends because we don't know what 2K are going to do. Nobody's playing this game mode. Just a heads up, like, nobody. Nobody is playing this mode. Like, this is, I can guarantee you, I've searched Google Trends, I've searched everything. This is the least people have played my team since the Fortnite boom. Since the Fortnite boom, this period right now in 2K22 is the least people have played because I've ranted nonstop better 2K are driving players away. So, it's very, very hard to tell the packs because it does seem like a lot of people still do play this game on weekends and they do open the Friday packs. So, with those cards... Unless, for example, it's like a flash pack where there's no guaranteed players and the cards are going to kind of lose rarity quickly or become rare quick. So like with Darius Miles, there were 100 times less Darius Miles than there were Lou Dortz on the market just because he was a lot more rare because he wasn't in guaranteed packs. Um, 
he was a guaranteed topper card, but he wasn't in the guaranteed packs. For the guys like Lou Dort, the Siakams, the Lamellos of the world, the Siakams, the Lamellos of the world may go up in price just based on like their name, but I doubt it by too much. But there are a severe, severe shortage of cards in the market right now. So if the shortage increases, the price is going to go up. I can't tell you guys when to sell, but all I'm going to say is sell everything you own before the last week of the season. Like, you can see this right now. 16 days left. Between now and like eight days left in the season, in the next, over the next eight days, sell everything you have. Sell everything you have. If you're not playing competitively or you're not grinding for wilt, like grinding hard for wilt, sell everything of value and just use reward cards within the next eight days. Because you might sell today and in four days time or on, or this time next week, prices might be higher because less people are, have played the game on the Friday and the Tuesday drop is going to be even less hyped because, well, that's what's happening is there's less players playing this game week on week on week because 2K are killing it. But for the people that are still remaining, um, it's hard to predict that. But all I can predict is that Super Packs, Super Packs this season are going to have more of an effect on anything. So before, make sure you have everything sold before Super Packs. Because again, like if I'm not playing in a, I'm playing in a, my team tournament, and if I lose, it's I think it's going to be tomorrow my next round, um, or Saturday because I'm not going to play Friday. Like if I lose, Donovan Mitchell is being sold, Duncan Robinson is being sold, Darius Miles is being sold. Like those three guys are being sold. If I the second that I lose, whenever I do lose in the term, like I'm not going all the way. And you're going to see my collection look like, I, I'm not going to have an auctionable player. I'm probably going to sell my Gary Harris. Actually, no, no I'm not going to keep... Gary Harris is a guaranteed back, so no point selling him. I'm probably going to sell my Fields. Probably going to sell my Rick Smiths. Probably going to sell my Worthy. I'm going to have basically all of these guys sold. You're going to be seeing me sitting on like 300 KMT with, no, with nobody in my collection. Except for maybe Mellow at that stage. But like, just the next eight days is the best time to sell. And... The crazy thing is, is that I don't know how much... We'll, we will see on Friday how much the market crashes. I don't think it's going to. Like, so... I have heard people saying, they're like, oh no, once we get really good cards... um, Once we start... Once we get a really good batch on a Friday, the price of everything's going to go down. And like, a really big batch of cards, it lowers the price, for example... It won't lower the price on a Josh Smith or a Mitchell. It will lower the price on like a LeBron. That really good batch of cards. Whereas, the only way for, like, the average card to go down is if there's a greater supply of them. And, like, these cards, some of these cards are borderline extinct in October. Like, Ben Wallace came out a week before all the Tuesday packs last year. There was a lock-in reward. And Ben Wallace was not extinct till, like, November. Actually, no, Ben Wallace was not extinct probably for another week. So, and there was a book. We can't forget there was a lock-in. Um... But yeah, that's pretty much it, lads. This is just a video talking about the market. I don't know when's the best time to sell. I don't know when the worst time to sell is. Um, all I know is that if you wait until Super Packs come out, you will lose so much empty. So unless you specifically need your cards or something between now and Super Packs, you can buy back your team. Between now and Super Packs, I would advise everybody to just sell their team. Just sell their team. And if you're just starting out the game... Build a team, build a team, something along this the lines of this. If you're starting at the game, keep to your budget players and then just hold. Build up your empty. You don't, this is not the time to go out and buy your LeBron. This is not the time to blow all your empty. Sit on your empty and hold. Build a team that you can compete with and then just work on building up your empty because it's very difficult to make empty in the game this year. So don't waste it. It's so hard to get. I don't want to see anyone being driven to hit the VC button. So do not be wasteful with empty. So anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it, lads. I mean, the market's kind of dead because the game's kind of dead. Um, and I just wanted to talk about this because I know there are still people that are blowing 50k on like a Jimmy Butler. When I'm like, that is that may be just some of the most reckless MT spending I've ever seen. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.